Hello everyone, welcome back to Esther's Song of Praise. I hope that you guys are having an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to go into the third chapter of Ruth. And this series has really been speaking to me on a spiritual level. I love Ruth and her dedication, her devotion to Naomi and her work ethic. It's something that's very inspirational and something that I aspire to. I hope that you guys are enjoying the series as well. I'm going to begin with an opening prayer, asking the Lord to, of course, bless his word and speak through me. And then we'll delve into the scripture. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we ask that this time together, Lord God, that this video is something that glorifies you, Lord. I ask that every person who hears my voice is encouraged by the reading of your word today. I ask, Lord, that you will continuously do miraculous things in my life and in all of our brothers and sisters' lives, Lord, that this will be an encouragement, that your word will be edified through us together. Father, my prayer, Lord, is that every single person out there all over the world, Lord, that they will just be encouraged, that they will know that you are with them, that they can see themselves as godly women, as Ruth is one of the many examples you've given us in the Bible. Lord, we just thank you for your word today, Father. We ask, Lord, that you will continuously bless this day, that you would encourage and empower every single person, Lord. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. So let's go ahead and get started with the third chapter of the book of Ruth. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash put on perfume and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know that you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night. And in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good. Let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized. And he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, Bring me the shawl that you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley 
and placed the bundle on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty handed. Then Naomi said, wait my daughter until you find out what happens for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Bless the reading of his word. I love this chapter so much. A few of my favorite takeaways are that Naomi was given wisdom from the Lord in order to advise Ruth and what to do because she wanted Ruth to be married, right? She didn't want her to end up alone and just spend the rest of her days as a widow. She saw that, you know, even though her son had passed away, that Ruth was young enough to remarry and to have a family of her own. And so she advised her with Boaz, knowing that he was not only wealthy, but that he had a kind heart. And I love that about Ruth, that, you know, she was like, I'll do whatever you tell me to do, because I'm sure that wasn't easy for her. <laughs> she barely knew Boaz. But, you know, she trusted Naomi and she trusted the fact that she had her best interest at heart. So when she told her, you know, to go lie down at his feet, I'm sure that, you know, Ruth was nervous as anyone would be. But in obedience, she realized that she found out just how kind hearted Boaz really was. And the fact that, you know, he wanted to protect her. He's like, you know, don't tell anyone, don't let anyone know that you were here. Like he understood the assignment. He understood what Naomi wanted Ruth to do, which was basically saying that she was willing and able to be married again, you know, after her first husband had passed. And he's like, you know what? I completely understand. I got you. Don't worry. You know, and we see here that Boaz is a representation of Christ as, you know, the bridegroom in our lives. And that, you know, Naomi knew that he wouldn't rest until the, the matter was settled because there was someone that was closer in line. And so not only was Boaz kind and generous, giving her the barley because, you know, he didn't want her to go back to her mother-in-law empty handed, which was a very kind gesture. But also he was honorable and he had integrity. You know, he didn't just take Ruth for himself because she was willing, but he said, you know, what? I want to do the right thing and, and let the relative who's closer to you and Naomi know what the situation is. And then if he's unable to step in and marry you and support you, then as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it and I'll do my part. And so I think that every single person, you can see they're all being obedient to the Lord and his calling. And when we do that in our lives, everything falls into place, just as Naomi and Ruth and Boaz shows us here in this chapter. So this was a blessing to me. My prayer is that it's a blessing to you also. Please drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any prayer requests. And as always, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, Lord, should the Lord tarry, <laughs> I will talk with you guys tomorrow. I love you, brothers and sisters. God be with you. Blessings always. Take care.